Tennessee senior senator now. Um, senator Marsha Blackburn joins us on the broadcast. Senator, thank you for joining us. Uh, it is so good to be with you, and I loved your open opening. It was wonderful. Well, Absolutely well, thank wonderful. You. We all should be grateful. We well, live we in start. a wonderful country. We do, and gratitude is armor plating for the for the soul. So thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, very busy time. We're in an election cycle, uh, and big news over the weekend. Um, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg passes away. First, your thoughts on the life and legacy of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was such a fierce advocate for women and opening doors of opportunity for women. Halloran, I have to tell you, I hope that I am as good and consistent an advocate for conservative women and all women as she was for women of the left and for pushing barriers out of the way for women. She was truly about equality and even though we disagreed on issues, I respected how personable she was and her friendship with Justice Scalia. Uh, she was known for having a very quick wit. She appreciated the opportunity to be a wife, a mother, and also active in the legal profession. So I appreciated that about her. Well, you guys have got some work to do. You are on the Senate Judiciary Committee, if I, if I remember correctly. And uh, the president has said that he will have a nomination. There's a, a lot of back and forth about whether or not uh, the Senate should try to accomplish this before this election. Um, but that is in the Constitution of the United States of America. So the president nominates and the U.S. Senate confirms. Um, and so th that's what's in front of you. I guess I, I pretty much know where you are. You would like to see this done. Um, but do you think it can be done in, in the limited days between now and Election Day? I do think it can be done. I absolutely do. We know that uh, Justice Ginsburg was confirmed in 42 days, uh, Sandra Day O'Connor 33 days, John Paul Stevens 19 days, uh, and a, an appointee can, nominee can get a hearing 30 days after they have been nominated. And following that, it generally takes about 60 days. It did take Kavanaugh 89 days to get confirmed. But we anticipate that we will have the hearing, then uh, we will move from that into the vote as soon as we finish with the hearing and call the vote in Judiciary Committee. Now, I will tell you, we know this is something that the Democrats say, well, you can't do that. It's not the way precedent has worked, but they're wrong on that because it is precedent. And the president is the one who gets to make this nomination. That is constitutional. Now, when you look at it, there are 29 times that a president has nominated in an election year. 19 of those 29 times, the same party controls both branches, the White House, and the the Senate. But we also know that it is important that these vacancies be filled. So you've had you've got precedent twenty nine times. You would have to go back to eighteen eighty eight, more than a hundred and thirty years, to find a time when vacancies had not been filled. So one of, we one, are. Go ahead. No, no, no. One of, one of the challenges, though, that the Democrats are putting up, they're saying hypocrisy, because what happened with Merrick Garland when the Obama administration was putting forward uh, uh, a nominee at the end of his term, and Republicans said, no, we can't do that. 
Well, but the difference is that was a divided government. And generally, when it is a divided government, the White House and the Senate of opposing parties, that waits until after the election. And you, there is um, there is precedent for that also. So I, the, the question is the number of votes. Uh, I'm hearing that Murkowski and maybe a couple of others have said they want to wait. Um, you have your committee. I'm sure that you understand the vote structure of the Senate Judiciary Committee. First of all, do you think you can um, can you run hearings that quickly and do the rules of hearings allow for you to process them quickly? Do you have the votes to move it out of Judiciary Committee into a full vote? Uh, or will the election year politics just slow all of that down anyway? Will there be some type of design by Democrats to use the rules of the Senate in order to slow it down beyond uh, the number of days that it would take to get it done? Of course, they're going to try to slow it down. They've already written to Chairman Graham asking him to put it off. And we know they're going to try to slow it down. But the constitutional authority rests with the president. The constitutional responsibility to provide advice and consent rests solely with the U.S. Senate. It is handled by the Senate Judiciary Committee, and we are going to do our due diligence. We're going to be responsible about this. And Halloran, bear in mind, the Democratic Party is the party that has said, look, we want to do away with the Electoral College. We want to expand the Supreme Court. Uh, they, so we're fighting against them. They will say, Oh, this is about the rule of law. No, it's not. The rule of law is the president has the authority and the responsibility to do this. And we will do it. We will do it in the appropriate, respectful manner. All right. I'll, I'll be looking forward to see how this plays out. Who will be named? The president did say that he will likely give president, uh, uh, you know, precedence. Uh, or preference, I should say, I'm sorry, preference to a, a female. Uh, there are some names in circulations. Is there a short list already, uh, already, Senator? Um, I, there is a list. It is out there. And Barbara Lagoa, who is a Cuban American, the first Cuban American on the Florida Supreme Court, and she's now on the Federal Circuit Court. She, is one of the leading nominees. Amy Comey Barrett, who went to college at Rhodes uh, College in Memphis, she is on the list. Amazing story. She is a mom of seven. Two of the children were adopted from Haiti, and um, she is on the circuit court. You have Joan Larson. She is on the circuit court and um, is out of Michigan. So we've got some great nominees that are there. All right, I'll, I'll be looking forward to circling back with you uh, as this uh, as you guys proceed. Uh, there'll be an announcement, and I guess the, the hearings will begin, and, and we will stay in touch with you. I've got a crazy idea about appointments to uh, the Supreme Court that I would love to run by you one day when we uh, have a chance to talk again. And you'll probably say, Halloran, you are cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but I can't wait to tell you about it uh, the next time we talk. <laughs> Absolutely. Take care. Bye-bye now. Right.